you nervous? A bit, yeah, you. No? No, I'm excited. I had a dream. You sound like that guy, yeah. What's his name now? Martin Luther King. No, no, no. The uh, Joseph and the Technical the Dream Court. Right. <laughs> anyway, I don't believe that dreams can be prophetic. I think that they're sort of projections of our subconscious desires. Right. But this one was different. We're holding a baby. You shouldn't say stuff like that, you know. I know. But it just felt so real. I woke up with this feeling of absolute contentment. Which is why I tried to wake you up. To share my contentment. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. I just went mood. We haven't been for weeks. I want to the baby. I know. <laughs> just don't feel like it. I suppose it's the closest thing we've got to the African plains in Weatherfield. Though, there has been sightings closer to town. We're gonna do a stakeout with Daniel tomorrow. That's okay, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. Is this the Manchester big cat you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing. There's been loads of big cats in this country. The wild cat of Warwick, the Huddersfield panther. Oh, unfounded rumours. Cats all have been killed and everything. Yeah, about dogs or foxes, probably. But not necessarily. Me and Ty saw a giant paw print on the red wreck last night. Look, I got a photo. Blimey, that is big. Well, it's definitely not a domestic cat. It could simply be a big dog. And we found some ginger fur. Now, I know dogs, and this is definitely cat hair. Well, big cats are not just ginger tongues. Well, pumas are gingery coloured. There's a video of one eating a domestic cat in London a few years back. Internet trickery. I'd like to do a piece on the Manchester big cat on my radio show. Would you consider doing an interview? Me? <laughs> on the radio? <laughs> What radio? Hospital radio. Oh. I'll be honoured. Do you think your listeners might be interested in something with a little more gravitas? No offence, Kurt. None taken. This is a proper local human interest story. It's a lot of trashy rubbish. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single hairdresser in possession of good fortune must be in want of a husband. Trashy rubbish, were you saying? Who's messaging? Oh, um, just my mate. You, uh, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I told you. I'm not worried. I'm excited. Did you know you tinker? Uh, yeah. Come on, mate. Oh, look, look, look. There's the baby. Oh, I can see it. The heartbeat is strong. Massive legs. Surely those are like supermodel legs or footballers' legs or something. Uh, it could just be the angle. Oh, oh, and fingers. I can see proper fingers. And um, the baby's healthy. Yeah, uh, everything's normal. Well, looks perfectly healthy to me. Amazing. Have you ever seen anything like it? Oh, sorry, of course you have, haven't you? You see this stuff every day. But I haven't. That's my kid. <laughs> oh, my God, I feel really weird. I feel like I've been drinking tequila or something. Not that I do that very often. I mean, I don't really drink at all. I'm a journalist, you see. Actually, admittedly, some of them do drink quite a bit, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm sure you'll both be great parents. Hope to see you at 20 weeks. Right. Let's celebrate. Where do you want to go? Oh, uh, I've just realised my mate Lucy's here today. She works in the canteen. She was the one I was texting earlier. All right, okay, let's go and see her together then. Might even get a free lunch. Oh, uh, she's going through a really bad breakup. I need to get a chat. 
Mm. And uh, but I'll only be about an hour or so. Mm. Then I'll meet you back at home and we can celebrate. Oh, oh! Can I tell my dad? I really, really want to tell my dad. I just want to tell the whole world. Right. There's plenty of time for that. We just calm down. Calm down. How can I do that? I'm too excited. <laughs> mm. Actually, I might go for a run. A run? You don't run. Yeah, well, I might start. <laughs> Oh, um, excuse me. Um, there's something I didn't tell you when we had the scan before. Hi. Did you keep texting? No one. What's a dodgy reply? Uh, if you must know, I was booking a vajazzle. It was going to be a surprise. Nice. Is it? You were quite critical about my last story. I was just trying to encourage you. Honestly, Dad. This is good. Romantic trash, and you know it. It's beautifully written, romantic trash. Despite her dexterity with dye, she couldn't change the colour of this man's character. He was a rogue through and through. Class. Although maybe say skill instead of dexterity, Claudia did tell you to tone down the big words. You would lose the alliteration. True. All right, keep it. Just throw in a few trashy bits here and there. I suppose I could reference the odd heaving bosom. Perfect. Oh, did you like my Jane Austen reference? Genius. <laughs> yeah, Jeff was very derisive. I don't think he got it. Anyway, Jeff's definition of culture is a story about a Manchester big cat. Such nonsense. Well, maybe. You don't believe a word of it. Some people do, so I think we should respect that. You're in a very forgiving mood. I'm having a good day. Oh? Yeah, marrying the girl in my dreams. My dad might be the next Mills or Boone. And there could be a tiger in the backyard. What's not to love? This one's for you. Denise's handwriting, isn't it? I found a doctor who can see you. Oh, actually, I should be getting back now. Look, they can see you right now. Um, you know what? It's probably a fuss over nothing. You said the baby's fine. I'd just be wasting your time. Continued bleeding should still be investigated. If only to put your mind at rest. <sighs> Notes say you were in for bleeding a month ago and told to come back if it continued. Uh, yeah, it, it hasn't been bad. I've not had any pain or anything. Well, I've had, I've had a bit of backache, but I just thought that was the pregnancy. It's OK, isn't it? The sonographer said the baby's all right. I'd like a colleague of mine to take a look. Why? I'd just like another opinion on this. Back in a minute. No. You have a right to call me in. What is it? There's nothing wrong with her. We found a lump on your cervix. But the baby, the, the baby's fine, isn't it? The baby's fine, that's not the issue. We need to book you in for a biopsy, ASAP. A biopsy? We need to find out what the lump is. What, what could it be? What, what, what are you saying to me? It could be cervical cancer. What? Right, um, well, if it is, um, cancer, then, then what? And we're back to Coronation Street in half an hour. Are you sure I can't call your partner? Daniel, isn't it? Look, I'm 24. You can't get cervical cancer at my age. I've, I've never even been for a smear test. We don't test for it before 25. It's rare, but not unheard of. There is a vaccine that we offer, the HPV vaccine. Do you know if you had that at school? Uh, I don't remember. I'm not a big fan of needles. We don't know anything for sure, but I do think you need to be prepared. Prepared for what? If you have cervical cancer, and if it is but advanced... Please, will you just tell me? I would recommend starting chemo and radiotherapy right away. Right. The treatment we can offer has a strong success rate. And, um... If I did need it, the, the, the treatment, it, it, it wouldn't harm my baby. We could delay treatment until the fetus is more developed, but 
If the biopsy shows that the cancer is advanced, it would be in your best interest to terminate the pregnancy. Oh, you got a pen pal? How very 90s of you. It's from my mum. Oh, that's sweet. I bet she's dead happy getting hitched. Is it any of your business? Sorry, I was just making conversation. Well, I'd rather you left me alone. Uh, excuse me, you can't speak to a lady like that. No, huh? honestly, it's fine, Brian. I was sticking my beak in. No, no, this really is none. I mean, I understand getting a letter from your mother might not put in the best of moves, but you can't take it out on poor Shoney. <laughs> honestly, no, it's fine. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't realise you had issues with your mum. All right, lads. Oh, lad and bloke old enough to be his granddad. Leave it, eh? Sit down. Leave it. You haven't got a clue. Any of you. I've been the funniest fight I've ever seen. <laughs> What do you think? Do I sound like a lady? Can't look you for a good time. Great, yeah. Shall we order? Two hot pots, one with ketchup. No, nothing for me, Tom. I knew something's up. What have I done? Is it what I did to your leopard print dress? I didn't mean to break the zip. I just thought it'd be good cat catching wear. Could we talk about it later? I'm just worried about a mate. Who? Can't tell you. I thought we didn't keep secrets. Musketeers, remember? Yeah, but it's their secret. It's not really my place. Fair enough. There's just one thing I want to know. What? How can I turn that frown upside down? Get us hot pot, then. Mm. And you can get me a new leopard print dress and all. <sighs> what? I was pregnant before, and I had a termination. Could this be why I'm ill now? There's no evidence to suggest that. But you can't say for certain, can you? Sinead, you didn't cause this. So I've just got cancer then. Out the blue. No reason for it, I've just got it. <sighs> Daniel was so happy before, this is gonna crush him. Nothing is certain. It's just preparing yourselves. I can give him a ring, we can all have a chat together if you want. <sighs> I'll speak to him. I will. Where are you going? Oh, I thought I'd best show my face in work. Do you have to? Are you OK? Jeez, you're shaking. It's Denise. What, your mum? Why? What's happened? Nothing. Wish it had. I hate her. You don't mean that. She sent me a letter. Right. Says that she saw that we're engaged. Says that she saw it on your profile, apparently. Likes to keep informed with what we're up to. Her words. She wants to come to the wedding. And what do you want? I don't want her anywhere near us. Are you sure? She's still your mum. <laughs> She's the most selfish, unmaternal woman that there is. And what next? She wants to start being world's best grandma to this one. No, I don't need her. Got you. And we've got our baby. I'm sorry I've ruined today. I don't know why I let her upset me. Family have a way of getting under your skin. That woman's not my family. I know she's not acted like it. Think about how much love you feel for our baby already. My mum. Denise was missing that connection with me. That love for her own son, it wasn't there. And I don't know why. <laughs> because when I saw that tiny little thing on that scan today, something changed. I'd do anything for that kid. What is it? I'm sorry. Oh, come here. Come here. It's just, it's just too much. With everything that happened before, I just... I no. just don't know if I can... It's nothing like last time. It's different. We're going to have this baby. We're going to be the best flipping parents that there ever was. All right? Yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Honestly. It's just my hormones are all over the place. I think I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry going on about my mum. Stressing you out. We should be celebrating. 
Can I treat you to an orange juice over at the Rovers? <laughs> hey, I forgot to ask. How was your mate? Um, oh. Oh, she'll be all right. She's fine. Fuss over nothing. Doesn't Deb get rid of his old sausages cheap at the end of the day? I think the Manchester big cat would be interested in those and all. Probably. I'm defo if they come, Do you want to hear me cat mating call? Do I? Do you? Yes, please. If you're going to be doing the IPA squealing, you can go outside. I don't think my ears can take it. Fine. We'll be back, as Arnie would say. <laughs> <clears throat> Why did you stop texting me? I'm in proper worried. Oh, my phone died. Oh, I'm sorry. So is the baby OK, then? Baby's perfect. So did they say why you were, you know, bleeding? Uh, they, they said it's unusual and uh, they'll keep an eye on me. But it's nothing to worry about. Really? Oh, because I've been Googling it and all these dead scary things kept popping up. I've been in bits all day. It's been awful. Oh, well, you can stop Googling now. The baby's fine. <sighs> you naughty little thing, giving your mummy a fright. Plain sailing from now on, eh? Good morning. Morning. Oh, thanks. Denise! What are you doing? You nearly give me a heart attack. Sorry, um, I've not woken up yet. Oh, head in the clouds, that's you all over. You nearly put yourself in an early grave. We're going for a couple of hours, not weeks, right? Are you going on a picnic? I love eating al fresco. I don't. Get some of your teeth. No, we're hunting the Manchester big cat. There was a sighting on Balaclava Terrace yesterday, and the bins outside the kebab shop have been knocked over. Some have been rooting through them. Oh, my friend Shirley has a big cat that's the image of Stalin. <laughs> wow. Does he wear a uniform? All right, maybe we should go. Uh, yeah, me too. Back to work. Right, we'll go and get the camera and the binoculars. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, just a minute. I, I need to give you your personalised instructions. What for? Uh, your schedule for the big day, dress code, and also your schedule for the photo call. Any queries, bell me. This is mad. Everyone's going to be worried about putting a foot wrong. Your wedding is supposed to be about showing your other half how much you love them. Not poncing around, showing off to everyone else. This is ridiculous. From the way, Mrs. Connor's paying. Ah, oh, lovely jubbly. Here you go, <laughs> Commandant Tracy's list of wedding demands. My oh, selection is getting sick to death in it. Not blame her. I feel like swerving it. I wouldn't do that, mate. She'll hunt you down, Tracy. You and Sinead will be next, though, wedding wise. You got her planned? No, not really. Something smallish. Well, cheapish. <laughs> into retro stuff, isn't you? Yeah. Well, then you should get married in Norris's house. It's like walking back into the 1960s. <laughs> All right, it'd be cheap, i give you that, but I honestly couldn't think of anything more depressing. If me and Beth get married again, proper married, I'd get me adamant costume out of the mothballs. Nice. I feel like a totally different person when I've got it on, like some sort of sexy superhero. Oh, now you're just going to put me off my pine. Actually, no, you've got a pint, Kirk. Why would we have a normal wedding when Sinead's the least conventional person that I know? Oh, Aya, um, I've got an appointment tomorrow for a biopsy at half ten. Uh, yes, you need Tinker. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if it's possible to change it, please. So if we do see this cat, right? Uh, when we see it. All right, when we see the cat, what are we going to do? Just, like, take a picture of something? We could try and catch it. What, get eaten alive? Well, prove it existed. We go down in history. What are you saying, Dan? Sorry. No, sorry, I've been looking up alternative weddings for me and Sinead. Well, you're not serious about that. Yeah, why not? Some of these ideas are dead romantic. Why what? Well, circle ceremonies, hand fasting. Hand fasting? Yeah, you know, when you tie the knot but round your wrists. All oh, right, yeah. So you think you meant something else? No. It beats a normal wedding. Gets rid of all the stuff that you can't stand, you know? Seating plans, invitation. Don't even need to book a venue. You can just do it outside. You just wait, mate. Your families will find a way to stick their oar in. Yeah, they'll take over if they can. Not if. Not if what? Not 
if we have the wedding on the same day as Tracy's? Well, that's tomorrow. So? Well, that's tomorrow. Three more weeks? What, are you sure you can't see me before then? <sighs> yeah, 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 I'm still here. Um, yeah, okay, uh, let's keep it as it is. I'll be there tomorrow at half ten. Man. Doesn't leave you long to organise it. There's not much to organise. Well, what are you telling you doing it? No, that's the point. It's a surprise. Means I can't be your best man, though. Best surprise made for Tracer. I've got it. What? Tomorrow, you marry me. Whoa! I'm already married. Well, sort of. No, no, no. I mean, at the ceremony tomorrow, you marry me and Sinead. Ah, instead of a vicar like? Exactly. Am I allowed to do that? Well, there's an alternative wedding. I could do what I like. Come on, Kirk. You know you want to. It won't be the same without you there. Best I wouldn't be able to go. Tracy's a best mate. Well, I think that niece Trump's best mate. Did you see the big cat? You know, up a fire escape or um, on a main street. You've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Would it get you out of mischief? Yeah, you could say that. Good job I trust you. How do you mean? Well, you could be getting up to all sorts for all I know. Ask Tyrone and Kirk if you don't believe me. I'm joking. Anyway, uh, I was thinking about the wedding tomorrow. Now we're going to get there. Oh, yeah. Um, I meant to talk to you about that. I've got a, a, a dentist appointment in the morning, so I might have to meet you there. You never said you had a problem. Uh, no, it's just the hygienist. But that'll be all right, won't it? Yeah. And then we'll meet back here when we can go together. Lovely day for a wedding, isn't it? Aye. They say they might rain later. Really? Well, it's no big deal. It's not as if Tracy's getting married outside, is it? Right, I'm off to see him run. Find out how Ryan's doing. Hey, listen. Nobody blames you for not taking his case. And I'm sure that Imran will do a good job, so stop beating yourself up. Cheers. See ya. See you later. You all right? Just dreading the dentist, that's all. I thought you said it was the hygienist. Oh, same thing. I just hate my teeth being fiddled with. But you'll be back here by 12, yeah? Yeah, yeah, should be. OK, well, cheer up. Might not be the best start to your day, but I think it's going to get a whole lot better. See you later. Yeah, see you in a bit. Kate! Yes, yes, she's gone. Yeah, shall I meet you on the corner? Oh, do you decorate a pagan wedding? I don't really know. I'm just winging. <laughs> it's supposed to be all about earth and nature and the elements. Well, shouldn't it be in the woods or something then? Ah, yes, but the idea is... So she comes out of the tram station and steps into this wedding wonderland. Right. Oh, it's quite romantic. <laughs> so long as she says yes. Of course she will. Maybe I shouldn't be springing out on her like this. Oh, stop worrying. She loves you to bits. She's going to be blown away. What? what? Hi, Ken. Hello. Is there some sort of street party going on? Huh? In a manner of speaking. But uh, shouldn't you be getting ready for Tracy's wedding? Oh, I'm very happy for you. I wish you'd told me. Why? It's not like you'd have wanted to be here. Well, let's give you that idea. Look, I know we've got our differences in the past, and I didn't behave very well with Sinead, but I was wrong. She's the best thing that ever happened to you. Do you mean that? Of course. And it's one of my deepest regrets about the baby. You know that. Well, then you may be interested to know another little secret. Sinead's three months pregnant. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy for both of you. Thanks. We are too. And I'd very much like to come to your wedding, if you'll let me. I mean, I've missed so many occasions in your life. I don't want to miss this one as well. I'd love you to, but what are you going to say to Tracy? Oh, leave that one to me. 
Thanks, Dad. This means a lot. How are the preparations coming along? Yeah, yeah, it looks great. It's great. I'm, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from Sinead now. I've been texting her, but I think she's still at the dentist. I can't wait to see her face. Yeah, she's not going to know what's it to. When will I get my biopsy results? I've marked you high priority. It shouldn't take long. Shall we take you up for your MRI? Are you clear on what we're doing? Is it really necessary? I'm just, I'm, I'm worried it's going to harm my baby. It's perfectly safe for you and the baby. We can find out if, and I repeat, if you have cancer, whether it's spread to other parts of the body. So you reckon I have got it then? The biopsy will tell us that. It's the MRI we should be concentrating on now. Do you have a partner you'd like to speak to first? Maybe get someone down here to keep you company? No. Well, yeah. Yeah, I have. But I just want to think everything through myself first. I was advised to terminate my baby before. No one's going to make you do anything you don't want to do. The MRI is simply so we can get as much information as possible. Tracy will forgive you. I won't worry about it. Oh, ah, yeah. Thank God she's the forgiving type. Have you started the ceremony? Well, yeah. Billy's emailing it through. She's uh, taking a long time at the dentist. Maybe something's gone wrong. No, it was just the hygienist. Well, they can mess up. A friend of mine went in for a casual clean and came out with a gold tooth. It's computer mix-up. It's easily done. <sighs> I had to be here. I just hope Tracy understands. Well, not one of her more obvious character traits. That's what I said. I'm going to have to stay clear for a while. Another time, my mum was having a crown fitted, the dentist pushed too hard, and that little screw thingy went right through her jaw and ended up inside her face. Kirk, please. That's to dig it out from under her eye socket. Oh, that did not happen. It did. It was inside my mum's face, her actual face. Well, shut up, hey, Kirky. Tell you what, why don't I drop her a text? Make up some excuse. Still no word. You see, this is the problem with mobile phones. The assumption that if someone isn't immediately available, then something terrible has happened. I never said something terrible's happened. Do you think something terrible's happened? Well, I've no idea. I'm simply saying, well, she might not have her phone. She might have run out of power. She might have lost it. She might not want to speak to you. Anyway, as I was saying, I must get back to work. I'm sure she'll show up. Ice lollies for dogs. If I have to hear this one more time. It's a good business idea. Oh. I know dogs, me. When I used to share a mirror with Michael, you never seen a dog more happy. So you actually used to share lollies with dogs? Not at the same time, obviously. I'm not an animal. We take it in turns. No, the dog wouldn't be able to hold the ice lolly. They've got no opposable thumbs. Well, of course. You have to hold it for them. Why can't you just get them normal lollies? Yeah. That's what the bloke from the bank said. Do you think that I should phone the police? Uh, perhaps the dentist, initially. I don't know which dentist it is. She's your fiance. How can you not know a dentist? Uh, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. It just didn't come up. Okay. She's there. Oh! Sinead! <laughs> You're the love of my life, and I want to spend every day of that life with you. Marry me. Now. Oh, it was all very spontaneous. And he knew you didn't want all the traditional rigmarole and all that lot. Could have discussed it with me. Ah, uh, yes. But then it wouldn't have been a surprise, would it? How did you get on at the dentist? What? I thought you went to the dentist. Oh, no, hygienist. Oh, yeah, 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 it was fine. Oh, I hate it when they do that scrapey thing. Because right through me. Yeah, um, I might need to go back and get some more work done there. Mm. Tracy's gonna kill me. Actually, she might kill Daniel and all. And Ken. I can't believe Daniel planned all this for me. He did it because he loves you. Maybe we should be getting back to the garden. Beth said she'll text as soon as she knows ready. She did like it, didn't she? Oh, she loved it. I don't know. I mean, she seemed a bit overwhelmed. 
Yeah, well, it is a bit overwhelming finding out you get married in half an hour. Especially when you just come back from the dentist. I just wanted to do something so amazing that it'd knock her socks off, but I don't know, maybe I went too far. Oh, don't be silly. She thought it was great. You knocked her socks off. You think? Defo. Oh, it's Billy's speech for the ceremony. I know he'd come through for me. I just want to make this a perfect day. No pressure, then. I don't know which one of us is more nervous. That's me. What a promise. I won't let you down. I know you won't. So text, yeah? As soon as we're ready for kickoff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You look amazing. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> She looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, she does. Thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. It started out as a crazy idea, but then the more I thought about it, the less crazy it seemed. You've been very busy. Not just me, everybody here. Right, let's get this show on the road. I was really chuffed when Daniel asked me to officiate at his wedding. And I'd like to start by welcoming everybody here and saying thanks for all the hard work that's gone into making this possible. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> yeah, you do really well. I will admit, though, I am a bit nervous. I'm used to running out on that pitch in front of thousands of people in my buzz of the bee suit, but this is serious. Luckily, my good friend Billy has helped prepare me for this big match by writing down a few words on the subject of love and marriage. If someone you don't know comes up to you and you don't know what to do, if they offer you a lift, a treat, or a sweet, or to show you a puppy you'd love to meet. You may feel nervous and not want to go, but always remember, it's not rude to say no. Now I'd like to suggest five ways we can all stay safe. For example, in the park or at the swimming pool. That's Billy's Stranger Danger speech. I've heard him give it out at our school. He sent you the wrong speech. Oh, right. Sorry. Do you know what? Maybe it's more in keeping if I say what I think in my own words. Call it puppy love. Oh, I guess I'll never know how a young heart really feels and why I love her so. I think it's clear what Donny's saying. It's very easy to love a puppy. They're so soft with the big eyes and the floppy ears and the way they stumble about like they're a little bit drunk. But real love, the kind I have for Beth and Craig, has to last a whole lifetime. So I suppose the only advice I can give to Daniel is never ever forget Sinead is not a puppy. Well done, Kurt. It was beautiful. <laughs> Deidre was a great fan of Donny Osmond. Look at me here, I'm well up myself. <laughs> but I think it's time we hear from the two people this day is all about. Daniel. Thank you. He's so beautiful. I think some of you know that I didn't exactly have the best start in life found it difficult to make friends, to trust anyone. Too scared, too immature. I'd resigned myself to never finding anything like this. I never expected to be happy. But you changed everything for me. For the first time in my life, I feel truly loved. Um, I can't believe you did this for me. All of you. And I really don't know what to say, apart from thank you. And I promise, whatever happens, I will always love you. Well, I think we're into time already done, so there's only one thing left to say. Daniel, Sinead. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> so nice of Robert to give us a free run of the place. He's a very nice man. Mm. I think the bride should have the first glass of champagne. Oh, uh, actually, I've got a little problem with alcohol. Oh, really? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. One glass I'll be dancing on the table and bra and nicks. <laughs> um, could you do us one with a fizzy water or something? Yeah. Secret save with me. How many times do I have to tell you? Stop playing with that thing. It's a text from Adam, a long one. Oh, dear. Problems? Well, apparently the ceremony went well, but at the bride and groom dance, Tracy punched Steve. I assume that's a broken nose emoji. Why would she do that? Ah, uh, Steve slept with Leanne. Again. And there was a cat fight at reception. No, no correction, cake fight. Between who? Tracy and Leanne. Leanne? But I thought he... You said what? Mm -hmm. Ah, I'd better resign myself to emotional Tracy when she eventually returns. The joys of parenting never stops, which you will find out very soon. Oh, there's plenty of time for all that. <laughs> Did you...? And you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can I, please? OK, uh, excuse me, uh, does everybody have a glass of champagne? Because I want to make a toast. Another one? <laughs> yes, another one. So, there are three reasons why my wife looks so radiant today. One, it's her wedding day, obviously. Two, she's madly in love with a handsome young man. He'll be here soon. <laughs> <laughs> and three, because she's pregnant. Oh, result? Well done. That is brilliant. Hey, congratulations, Jadako. Mm. Oh, yeah, so this is now officially the best day of my life. Oh, cheers. 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 All right, next round's on me. Uh, no, it's on uh, me. Paying, no argument. Uh, as long as one of you's paying, I don't give a monkey. <laughs> Too right. Let's get more, so. yeah. Right, more champagne? Or perhaps going with the pagan theme, we should go for a bottle of mead. Oh, just because it's an alternative wedding doesn't mean it's actually the Wicker Man. Eh, uh, lager's fine, sir. Can I have a moment with my wife? Yeah, congratulations. Cheers. You all right? Mrs. Osborne. I can't believe we just did that. I know. Me neither. You don't think people are going to be annoyed, do you? You know, when they find out that we didn't hear writing. Nah. Anyway, it's our wedding. We do what we want. What about Chez? So that's what it is. I knew something was bothering you. N no, it's not. Well, it's not bothering me. I just... I just worry about how he's going to find out, that's all. So it's worrying you, not bothering you? Yes. You want to do it now? Yeah. If that's all right. Then it'll be off my mind and we're sorted. Yeah, of course. Want me to come with you? It's probably best for one male. Yeah, it probably is, isn't it? I love you. Can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Me too. So just... Yeah, sorry, the lock's knackered. Maybe we'll need to get it fixed. Oh. You look nice. Oh, thanks. Is it a special occasion? Um, it's a, a wedding dress. Oh. Wait, well, you, you don't mean... I've just got married. To Daniel? Yeah. Of course, to Daniel. Congratulations. That was, uh Unexpected. Yeah, uh Yeah. Daniel wanted it to be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it must have been. Well, congratulations again. You all right? Yeah. Are you sure? You don't look all that happy for someone on the wedding day. Ta. You know what our wedding 
when you had to tell me that it was on. How did you do that? Tell someone who you really care about something that big? I don't know, you just have to be honest and say it, I guess. And then figure it out. Right, yeah. Hey, do you want a biscuit? I'm pregnant. And, um, I'm fine. Ty, about, about the skip. And the baby? So that's the big thing. You haven't told Daniel, have you? Do you want to keep it? Then that's good, isn't it? It's just, um, after everything else that happened last time, I'm scared he'll freak out or that things will change. Maybe you don't know that. He might be well excited. But it was tough, you know, calling it all off. But I knew I was doing the right thing. And it turns out I was right because here you are in another wedding dress and up the duff. I just knew I had to put Joseph first. I mean, that's what you do as a parent, isn't it? You'll understand in nine months' time. It's, um, it's less than that now. Right, well. Well, I promise you, it'll be the best decision you ever make. The best. People always say that. I know they do, but it's true. <laughs> he means everything to me now. I don't know how I coped without him. And I'm sure Daniel will feel the same. Oh, she'll be back in a sec. Well, we'll just toast you then. To the groom. To the groom! <laughs> to the groom! On his happy day. You all right, Tracy? Did she not hear what happened? Yeah, we got a text, a big one. So how in hell's name, in hell's name, could I be all right? Yeah, that's right, Mary. I've had a little drink, and so would you, if you were me. Oh, hello, Tracy. Oh, hello, Sinead. You look nice, you bitch. Oi! Now, just calm down. No, I won't calm down, and you know why? Because you lot were right. You knew something like this was going to happen. I see, none of us knew about Steve. No, Dad, something like this. You knew it was going to go wrong, so you all stayed away, and you know something? I don't actually blame you because you two, you two, you make a really lovely couple. I just wish that I could have been a lovely couple. Leia, <laughs> uh, how's Leanne? Oh, yeah, well, she had to have our surgery. Um, we're just off to see her now. It's horrible, isn't it? I'm Ryan as well. Yeah. Hey, listen, where's my manners? Welcome to our dysfunctional families. <laughs> oh, thank you. All the best families are dysfunctional. Hey, listen, it was Tracy's wedding we were trying to swerve. I had no idea we were going to miss yours and Daniel's oh, too. Oh, so. no, honestly, it's fine. I was Portsmouth. Oh, it seemed like we were there about five minutes, so we set off early, drove through the night, you know, to try to avoid the M6. Mm. Dad, come on, we should get going. Yeah, yeah, come in. So, if Leanne's well enough, they're going to take her off the ventilator this afternoon. Ah, I'll keep everything crossed. Hey, how was the wedding, anyway? Oh, it was awesome. Not a bag of sugar almonds in sight. <laughs> Great. Hey, I tell you what, I wouldn't like to be in Steve's shoes. Mind you, I wouldn't like to be in Morocco, full stop. Oh, you and your wee monkey having a bit of quiet time? It was such a lovely thought. The baby's gonna love him. Don't you think of me? I will swerve the collection. Oh, and I won't be tipping up for any baby shower either. FYI. Noted. So, how's the honeymoon? Well, apart from the morning sickness and the eight hour shift at the fun factory. 
What's she problem? Oh, I got married in a community garden, man. Where the dogs do their business and the tramps are sweet on their sherry. <laughs> well, it was our day, right? And we thought it was magical. Now, fair play to you. I mean, there's nothing like the smell of dogs, dirt when you're giving it the whole till death do us part. Megan Mark, I'll eat your heart out. <laughs> oh, bye, Sinead. Bye, monkey. Oh, come on, guys. This order needs to be ready yesterday. Well, it had helped if our staff wasn't on annual leave. Gina is visiting Sally. You can't begrudge her that. I know, I'm not. It's just her and Sal are two of our fastest workers. Oi! What are you doing? Give it back. Oops. Sauce. She did that on purpose. I wind up with you. It was only messing. <clears throat> she was daydreaming instead of doing her work. Hate these women that get pregnant and suddenly slack off as if they're too precious to lift a finger. I'm not. When I was pregnant with my tailor, I carried on as normal. Working, shopping, smoking, drinking. Crystal meth. Say that again. Oi. I don't. Oi. Get back to work, or you'll be getting your P45 personally delivered by the end of the day. <laughs> I thought you were taking some time off. I thought you had this place under control. I have. Go back to the hospital, spend time with your family, go. Vicky, she's causing all kinds of chaos. I know she's a good worker, but she's not one for making friends, is she? But I did say that she'd be trouble. Now I can't sack her because it's going to make things worse for Simon. You know, he's got enough on his plate with Leanne at the hospital. Do I need to intervene? No, you don't. I've got it under control. Go. Call me if anything comes up. All right, come on, guys. Half an hour before you clock off Vicky. And have a word. What do you want? I was on a break. Yeah, but you don't schedule for a break. Look, I don't want to have to issue you a formal warning. Please, don't. The guy worked just as hard as some around right here. That she never spent most of the day staring into space. Okay, look, please just let's get back to work. Sinead, have a word, please. Is, um, everything okay? Well, why don't you tell me? Yeah, fine. Are you sure? Because you're normally one of the most reliable workers, but you've been really off your game today. Sorry, it's just hard to concentrate, what, with all the excitement of yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, flogging knickers isn't exactly my dream job either, you know? But it makes it harder for me to discipline the real slackers if you're not putting 100% in either. Sorry. No, 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 don't. You don't have to be sorry. Just, just knuckle down. Yeah, I'm just waiting to find out my biopsy results. Yeah, they're doing today. Sinead Tinker. Here, Barbie. Get a load of this. What, what the hell is that? Dog on a motorbike. What? That, that's cruel. What are they going to do if he falls off? He might crash. He does in a minute. Watch his stiff on him. That's not funny. That's sick. Why are you even watching something like that? It's all right, Barbie. It's just a video. Can you stop calling me, Barbie, please? What do you want to want? Barbie. Oh, sure. <coughs> hey, are you two at it again? I thought we'd sorted this. But I was just getting the brew and she started flipping out. What? No, I didn't. You're the one going around watching sick right. videos. Nobody should be on the phones. We've got work to do. I'm just on hold. I don't care. Hang up, call them back in your own time. It's really important. So is this order, and I've only got half a workforce now. Please, both of you. Get back to work. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm Sinead. Sinead! Right, okay, so I've got to wait and someone will call me back later. Right, bye. Sinead! Oh. <clears throat> what was so important? Um, if dry cleaning. Seriously? <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the hell are you doing with that? Oh, no, how's that happened? 
Exactly. Worse than Jake. Do you want me to go and get you a bib? Oh. Right. What have you got for us? Uh, hardly anything yet. Come back and do Oh, it. it's never going to wash out, this. Well, maybe if you spent more time sewing and less time stuffing your faces. We can eat and work at the same time. Doesn't look like it. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. What are you doing? Hashtag incontinent workmate. Will you just stop winding everyone up? Well, chill out, Barbie. I'm just having a laugh. Yeah, well, it's not funny. And you're not funny. Have you had surgery recently or what? Uh, what did you just say to me? Because it looks like you've had your sense of humour removed. You shouldn't be filming me. It's a breach of my privacy. Sorry, not sorry. You, delete that now. Please! Please, can you all just pack it in? It was vacant. She's, we're all working and she's going around filming people's bums. Yeah, and she said she's going to put it online. Only because she's went and put herself. I haven't. It's cake. Right, all of you, I want your phones in your locker now. If I see anybody else on the phone today at work, you'll get a warning, and I mean it. And you, you delete that video right now. I'm not going to ask you again. Delete it now. Oh, you got to change then? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, that's me. I'm going to have to answer it. No, you'll get us all in trouble. I'm going to have to. But if, if Peter comes, just give us a signal or something. Hang on, what's the signal? I don't know. Just use your imagination. Hello? Uh, yes, you need to. I'll do an owl. Well, that's a rubbish signal. What would an owl be doing in here? Oh, yeah, good point. Oh, I'll have to sneeze then. That's no good. What if you actually do a sneeze? What? You can't just give me my results now. Well, I'll hold it in. What if I sneeze and Sinead thinks it's you? You want me to come in tomorrow? So not the difference. Your sneezes are ridiculous. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know if I can get the time off work. You have to let them out, is it? It's dangerous if you don't. It can make your eyes explode. Seriously. What? Is she on her phone? Mr. Barlow, Sinead's on her phone again. Are you 12 or something? Sinead, I don't believe this. Did I not make myself clear? It was really important. What is it? You dry cleaning again? No, it's, it's private. Oh, I bet she was just on the phone, dear fella. Come on, let's have a look. What, what are you doing? Get off my phone, you stupid cat! I've never killed you, Sinead, don't, Brad! you're pregnant. Oh, you Come That's enough. That's enough. Stop. <laughs> Stop! Stop! Enough! Right, the pair of you in my office now. So, what was all that about? It wasn't my fault. Especially you, Sinead. You're pregnant, for God's sake. What do you think you're doing? Probably your hormones. Be quiet. You've been nothing but trouble since you started here. So, I'm suspending you both for one week. Oh, you are joking. You have given me no choice. But, but what about the big order? That's exactly why I'm doing it, Sinead, because we'll be more productive without either of you. Gives me more time to visit my son, I suppose. Get out. Not you, Sinead, stay there. Look, um, is everything OK? No. I've just been suspended. No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, is there anything else? I mean, I can understand Beth doing that, but that's not like you. No. Because if there is, you can tell me. I'm not just your boss, we're family, you know that. Thanks. But no. I'm fine, honestly. It's a bit racy. Yeah, yeah, but it's not about that. It's about parenting, motherhood. And boobs. Lots of boobs. <sighs> that's what the editor said as well. It distracts from the story a bit, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, but if you forget about the... The boobs? Uh, yes. Does it work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally believe these addresses. They're pretty bitchy, though. Really? I was going for sussy. Oh, I've got a bit of news, too. I've been offered a place on the MA at Manchester. <sighs> Modern and contemporary literature. Well remembered. Somebody dropped out. Well, that's great. Is it? I'm not sure it's the right time. But with the baby and the shop... There's never a right time for these things. It's just a lot to take on right now. I'm not sure I could do it. 
Plus, Sinead will need me. This pregnancy hasn't exactly been easy. What did she say? I haven't told her. I was just going to defer. I don't want to cause her any more stress. You've got to talk. You're a couple. These decisions need to be shared. Oh, hello. You're back early. Everything OK? Um, yeah, I just... I don't feel very well. I feel a bit sick. Oh, well, is there anything I can get you? No, I'll be fine. I just need to rest, I think. Right. Well, I'll leave you to it. I'm sure you've got plenty to talk about. Thanks, Dad. And, uh, look after her. <sighs> Bye. Bye. I lied. About what? About feeling sick. Well, I do a bit, but that's not why I'm on. I've been suspended. Suspended? Well, do you want me to have a word with Carla? It wasn't Carla, it was Peter. It's bang out of order, that. Suspending Sinead. We should start a campaign. Yeah, justice for Sinead. Maybe you could do a dirty protest. Oh, no, no, hang on. You've already done that. Yeah, all right, thank you. Is he? That's not funny. Is my dad in? Yeah, but be careful, he might suspend you. <laughs> hey, mate. What are you doing here, then? Can't just wonder how my mum was. Oh, uh, I've not seen her today, but we can go tonight, if you like. Come on, thanks. Come on, it's OK. Tyler's mum's not here. Come on. Now come. Oh, she's in. Look, Si, I had to suspend her, OK? What have you done that for? Because she was fighting with Janae. She was winding everybody up. That's a death sentence for me, that. I want a word with you. It'll have to wait. I'm busy. No, you didn't wait before you suspended my wife. Si, look, just go on. We'll talk later. Don't worry, OK? It'll be fine. It won't be fine. How can it be after what you've done? Do you, who do you think you are? She's you coming here. Tell me how to She's run pregnant. my business. I know Which only makes what you've done sexual discrimination. No, it doesn't. Have you checked? Yes, I've checked. I know the rules and regulations. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask Adam when he gets home anyway. Ask Adam when I get home. Do, do you, you know what your about? problem is? I don't care. Yes, I know what my problem is. It's a family that constantly do my editing. No, your problem is you've got no empathy. Yeah, well, you'll empathise with my fist if you don't oh, shut. Oh, typical you. What are you going to do next, eh? Throw me off a cliff? No, but I might push you down some stairs. Come on, is that it? Next. Come on. She's your sister-in-law, for God's sake! Oh, sorry, so what are you saying? That I should treat her differently just because she's family? Yes, right, there absolutely. you go. Absolutely. That's discrimination right there. That Vicky That's was probably winding her up. Yes, she was, but Sinead was kicking off as well. Is there something wrong with her? What's up? No, she's probably on edge because of what happened to the baby last time. Well, let's just hope that she calms down by the time she gets back then. So what? She's still suspended? Yes, yeah, she's still suspended. I'm sorry about that, but she's still suspended. Well, if that's the way you run a business, you're gonna have no factory left. I'm flaming my arms. Sorry to interrupt. We just wondered if we could have a quick word. Is it about Sinead? Yeah, it is. <sighs> there you go. You feeling any better? A bit. I just can't believe I'm so tired. I'm not surprised. A little Danielle growing inside you. I'm not calling it Danielle. Listen, I've got some news. The uni have offered me a place on the Masters. That's great. Well, are you going to do it? I don't think so. There's loads of reasons why I shouldn't. You know, the baby, the shop. Hey, shut up. They're not reasons, they're excuses. Well, they're very good excuses, though. Mm, I'm not letting you put your life on hold for me again. Are you sure? Yeah, look. Neither of us know what's around the corner, do we? And, well, this Masters could really set you up. You need to start thinking about your future. Our future? You and me, little Danny? Yeah, of course. Guess what? Tutors serve emailed me. They said they've got a meeting being cancelled so they can see me to talk about the Masters. Hey. hey, why don't you come with me? Uh, nah. You're all right. Why not? It's not like you've got anything else to do. Be a day out. Um, to 
be honest, I think I just need to rest. Nothing wrong, is there? No, I, I'm just feeling a bit wiped out, that's all. I'm going to chill in front of the telly and watch a box set or something. Hey, look at this. Pregnancy app. Takes you right the way through to birth. Reckons that this little one is about the size of a plum. Well, between a fig and a plum. And even move its little legs and everything. Amazing. Yeah. Exciting times, eh? Do you want some toast? Yeah. Then are you staying here? Here, I expect. Although, I do quite fancy a beef. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's dead beautiful, you know. Oh, and I can just see you and Bri giving it large at one of them foam parties you read about. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I better crack on. Ooh, the glamour. Mm. <laughs> All right, Sinead. Oh, yeah. Did you get me text? So, did you ring him? Cos, like I say, he's dead soft, is Peter. And anyway, you know, I think he regrets suspending you. I do. Sinead, look. Kate, run! Yeah. Go on, yeah, do I'll it. I can. Anyway, I, I just thought I'd wait a bit. All right. Well, just so you know, we've said if he has that Vicky back, we're all walking out. Thank you. Where are you off to, then? Um, just to meet your out shops. Do you know, I'm starting to wish I was in the sim bin with you now. Right, we'll have fun. And if you've not heard from him by the end of the day, give Peter a ring, yes? I will do. Right. See you later. Yeah. Sinead Tinker. Tinker. Well, it still is really. But it's going to be Osborne, Sinead Osborne. My Auntie Beth always says once a tinker, always a tinker. But Daniel, that's my husband. Well, I just I love him to bits and, well, I want to take his name, really. And your husband? Is he here with you? Uh, no, no, he's not. Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay, Sinead. I've read your biopsy report and the findings on your MRI. The result shows squamous cell carcinoma grade three. You mean grade three cervical cancer? I'm afraid so. There are a, a few options. We could perform a hysterectomy. I'm pregnant. I know. And believe me, I understand how distressing this must be for you. If there's someone you'd like to call, I... No. No, there's no one. Because the cancer is aggressive, we need to begin a course of radiotherapy as soon as possible. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. Sinead, you're my patient, and I have to advise what I think is in your best interest. As difficult as it is for you to contemplate, you need to terminate the pregnancy. No! And no. I have to tell you that going forward, Radiotherapy would mean it would not be possible to achieve another. You're going to have to do something else. Something else. You need to do something else. In order to achieve the best outcome possible, what I've suggested is... No. No. If you were to wait until the end of your first trimester, you could undergo treatment with a milder chemotherapy, but it isn't really something I'd recommend in your case. I can't. I can't. It's... It's my little baby. The size of a little plum. I'd like you to read these. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's your decision, but... I'm, I'm sorry, I can't... Sinead! Sinead! 
wait, please. Sinead, gracious me, what on earth's the matter? Please, let me help you. Whatever it is, is it the baby? Is something wrong with the baby? Look, if you won't tell me, then you'll, you'll have to talk to Daniel. It's his baby, too. No! <laughs> I need to get my head around it. I need to decide about the treatment. The treatment? For what? Cancer. The cervical cancer. I've got cervical cancer. <laughs> what did the hospital say? I mean, what's the prognosis? Sorry if that sounds insensitive to us, but I need to know if you're okay. Are you okay? I'm sorry. You don't need to be. How long have you known? Not long. Well, it's no longer the sentence it used to be, is it? Not now. There are lots of different treatments, and people respond very well. Yeah. Plus, you're young and you're healthy. You've got a lot going for you. You know, you can beat this. Oh, sorry. I don't want to supposed to refer to it like a fight or a battle with winners or losers. I'm sorry. Sorry. I presume this is why you and Daniel decided to get married so quickly. How is he taking it? He doesn't know. What? Daniel doesn't know. I've not told him. I don't understand how you could keep something so important from him. I've tried telling him. I let the words form in my head and I can hear myself saying them. But then suddenly it's like... I can see his face. Just listening as I speak. And I just know for a fact that it'll just break his heart. And I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. But this is something you have to tell him. You can't go through this on your own. Daniel loves you and he'll want to be with you. I know. I'll tell him in a few weeks. Why wait, Sinead? I'll wait until the end of my first trimester. Sorry, I, I don't understand. The doctor gave me a choice. 
wait until the end of my first trimester and have mild chemotherapy. Or... Start aggressive treatment straight away. Aggressive treatment? A treatment that would mean I'd have to terminate my pregnancy. And the radiotherapy that I'd have would mean I'd never be able to have a baby again. This is our one and only shot, having a baby of our own. And I just, I don't want to lose that. But Daniel needs to be with you. I don't want him to face choosing between me and our baby. I won't put him through that, right? I won't. I understand it will be a difficult choice for Daniel to make. Good. But it's not right to keep it from him. Not right? Well, rather, I mean, I, I think it's unfair. <laughs> You're talking to me about fairness. Daniel might well agree with your choice. Yeah, exactly. And what if it's the wrong choice? What if we delay the treatment until the baby's safe? And it doesn't work. It doesn't work, Ken. The cancer spread and I die. I know that Daniel will never, ever forgive himself. He'll think he should have put up a better fight or argued more or done something. This way, my way, he can't do that. I understand. Thank you. But you can't ask me to keep this secret. Not from my son. It's Daniel, he's on his way. He'll be back soon, so you better go. Will you tell him? Then I will. You were the reason I lost our last child. This is my body. It's not yours. It's not Daniel's or anybody else's. It's mine. It's also my cancer and my baby. If you tell Daniel, I will never forgive you. Thank you. How's Amy doing? Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh funny. How's Amy? Um, sorry, I'm miles away. Um, yeah, Amy's good. Ah, good. Hey, have a look at them. Oh, wedding photograph. Yeah, there's some belters in there. They look so happy. Hello, hello. You all right? Yep. Obviously, it'd be better if Sinead wasn't still suspended. No, she's not anymore. I'll go around there. I'll have a talk to her later. Yeah? Yeah. All right, great. Thanks. Those are my wedding photos. Have a look. Oh. Mm, look at her. She's glowing. Listen, uh, I've got a bit of good news. That's why I popped in. So I've just been to see my tutor about taking up that place on the MA, and I can start tomorrow. Ah, hey, well done, man. That is great news. Yeah, you tell Sinead? Yeah, yeah, just now. And she was really happy for me. Yes, yeah, so come on, show a bit of enthusiasm. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, great news. That's great. more like it. So to mark this momentous occasion, I've booked us a table at the bistro. Oh, you're treating us. It's all right, don't worry, I'm only joking. So when you've done this course, are you going to have letters after your name? Well, I've already got letters after my name, but yeah, I'll have more letters. So what will you be after all this? Skin. <laughs> well, that's providing that we get through the next two years. Mm. Here he is. About time. Just about to order. Where's your name? The Lou. Oh, Robert. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for sorting out those flexi hours for me. Not at all, mate. Glad we're not losing you. Yeah. Oh, and when you get a moment, bottle of champagne, please. Grandad's got a short story in the Gazette tomorrow. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and I risk a risk of topping that achievement. 
this one, right, then accept to do his masters. Hey, double celebration. Champagne coming right up. Yeah, when I say champagne. Well, I've got a lovely Prosecco. Thank you. Hey, no, get the proper stuff. It is a celebration after all. You want to live once, eh? From Underworld, so, hey, whenever you're up for it, we'd love to have you back. Well, having said that, I mean, if you'll have us. Sorry, yeah, um, I'd love that. Thanks, Peter. You're welcome. Something on your mind, Dad? <laughs> Ooh. You're all for this yesterday. Let's put the dampers on now. Your life is about to change. <laughs> Not much. I know having a kid's hard, but there's two of us. And when Sinead decides to go back to work, there's a crash at uni. There you go, eh? He's got it all worked out, you see. Mm -hmm. Come on, he's a genius. Runs in the family, doesn't it? Well, I'm not exactly going to run into this with my eyes shut. Not you. <laughs> Uh, can I get one a coffee or perhaps something a little stronger? Uh, no, I think we're all right, mate. How about we move on to the Rovers? Oh, I can't. I've got to pick Si up from his mate. Sorry. Oh, you can go if you want. I could do with an hour now. Granddad? I'll pass if it's all the same. I'm uh, feeling a little tired, to be honest. Okay, excuse me. I'm just popping to the gents. What's going on with him tonight? Eh? My dad. Don't tell me you haven't noticed. It's been a proper rain cloud all night. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it's something. Thank you. Dad. Oh, are you joining Adam and the Rovers? Oh, a word with you first. Uh -uh. You've been off all night. Off? <laughs> Don't play games with me. I know you too well. Something eating away at you. And I know exactly what it is. You don't think that I'm capable of bringing up a baby and doing my MA, do you? You're wrong. Mm. And what else would it be? Not good enough? Or studious enough? Or not Ken Barlow enough? I'll see you back at home. I'm not gonna prove you wrong. Daniel. Thank you. I don't think I can continue keeping a secret from it. You're part of our family now, and I want to respect your choice, but this isn't right. It's not right for Daniel, it's not right for you, it's not right for any of us. Oh. Look, I'm sorry, Sinead, I truly am, but... He's my son, and he needs to know what's going on. Just please, let him be a part of this. I can't tell him. You said I was responsible for you losing a child. I, I didn't mean that, I was... No, 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 you're right, I was, and I'm truly sorry. But I don't want to be responsible for you losing this baby. I know you're strong in mind and will, but I urge you to reconsider. Look, you and Daniel, you're a good team. You should be working on this together as a team. Please, tell him. I can't. And I can't be complicit in keeping a secret like this for my son. It's his life and his future, too. I'm sorry, Sinead, but he needs to know what's going on. And he will. From you. Or from me. <laughs> 